Hello guys, welcome to Monitoring and Evaluation Made Simple. I'm your host, Coach Alexander. I'm so glad that you've come to this channel. If you haven't done so, and if you're here for the very first time, just subscribe to this channel so that you get all the latest updates in M&E. It has been a, quite an interesting year, 2020. So I thought it would just be fitting to understand how to identify key lessons learned from a project. So you may be implementing projects uh, in your organization or you may be a manager of one of these projects and you want to get to understand how you can identify the lessons learned, okay? But for those of you who are here for the very first time, maybe let me just explain who I am. My name is Coach Alexander. I've been a monitoring and evaluation professional for about 10 years now. I like to think of myself as a guru because I think I think I've earned it because I can answer many of the questions and in fact I've helped a lot of people around the world in monitoring and evaluation especially those who are actually both the, okay both the newbies and both those who want to actually sharpen their their skills okay so now let me just explain something. On January 12th, 2021, we'll be starting our six-month one-on-one coaching program. If you haven't enrolled in this program, please take time to enroll in this program. Just write to me. My email is in the description below. This is a very good program. We already have students running with this who we enrolled last year. I mean, anyway, it's this year. We haven't yet entered the 2021 yet but we had some students and they enrolled they've gotten the full maximum benefit out of this program and i really want you guys to consider enrolling in in this it's going to be a six month one-on-one -on -one coaching so please write to me if you're interested in being coached by me and some other colleagues also i have some freebies these are the 2020 M&E guide and the logical framework analysis step-by-step -step guide. The link is in the description below. Please feel free to download these books. They are totally free. They'll kickstart your quest into understanding M&E into implementing it in your organizations. Then finally, I also have the Udemy step-by-step -step, uh, course on how to develop a monitoring and evaluation system. You can do well to enroll in this, this course. So this video is quite long as usual and it's rich in content. So take advantage of the timestamps which are in the description below so that you are able to navigate your way around this video without having to really watch the whole video, but just watching certain segments of this video that you feel are important. So let's get started, shall we? So in every project, whichever project you are, you are running, whether it's a strategic plan, okay, I like to think of a strategic plan as a as a project, but it's it's a it's actually a strategic plan, but you can it has activities, it has a start point, it has an end point. So I like to think of it as well. But as you can see in this image, when you plan for your interventions, everything happens here, all right? And then after you do the planning, you do the actual implementation. So now the implementation of the project is where now you see you're actually uh, doing the activities you had planned. And those activities are obviously translating into something and something meaningful because that is what you had planned. So during that process, you are obviously going to be monitoring. You are obviously going to do, do some midterm evaluation and so on and so forth. However, when the project comes to an end, you do the final evaluation. And that evaluation is meant to give you information about how your project performed. So now that information can be either positive or negative, but regardless of which direction it takes, it is supposed to stimulate learning in your organization so that 
when you have those evaluation results generated here, as you can see, these are now the evaluation results. They will be used for planning of a new project. And then the cycle restarts at the planning, implementation, evaluation. So you find that this is a continuous cycle and that's why they say it's a continuous learning process. So now, the issue is that if you want to generate lessons learned, it really comes down to studying the evaluation report and its recommendations. So now, I really want to stress that this is the starting point. Just because you have the evaluation done, usually these evaluations are conducted by independent consultants. So once you have this evaluation done, you have to study it. You have to make sure that it answered the questions that you're looking for. Don't be afraid to criticize this report, okay? Because that is the whole essence of getting to understand whether it's tackling everything you wanted. It is really critical, guys, that you come up with a very good terms of reference before the evaluation that the consultant should follow religiously because that terms of reference is going to help him or her or it could be an organization a group of consultants answer what it is you want to you know find out about the project and usually it's really simple you want to know whether your project has succeeded or not and if it hasn't succeeded what were the underlying underlining factors and what should be done in future now after you've studied you need to organize a workshop and bring stakeholders together i feel this hasn't in my experience sometimes people skip this i don't know why they just have an evaluator come up with an evaluation report and after that evaluation report is done they'll submit it back to the donors it's not supposed to be that like that 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 report somehow needs to be validated and that is where you have stakeholders coming together so stakeholders should be able to critique this report and really find out whether it is answering first of all the project objective whether it has answered whether the project achieved its object objectives or not and also they need to it needs to be an opportunity for them to really see whether the the evaluation actually tackled the underlying issues that were being asked in the terms of reference so you can have stakeholders from different different sectors. You can invite people from different donor agencies. You can invite government officials. You can invite even your the donors that are supporting this project. Those are very critical people. You invite them. They will come, even if they don't come 100%, but some of them will come and they'll give you a very good input on the report. So after they give you your input, you can actually take it back to the consultant and say, these were our comments. So now, after you take back that report to the consultant, the consultant obviously is going to try to work on the comments. Now, let me make this thing clear. We are not saying that the findings should be changed. The findings, if that is what they found on the ground, then that is, the, that is what is on the ground. But the question is, I think, more on the interpretation and whether enough was done to get to the bottom of things. So now after the consultant has made the needed adjust, adjustments and probably has beefed up the report, both the implementers of the project and the stakeholders will endorse the recommendations of the report. 
So those are the recommendations which now stimulate the learning process. So for instance, if the consultant mentioned that certain things need to be changed in the next phase, if there'll be a next phase, there has to be changes, all right? So the lessons learned need to be properly documented. And usually what happens after the evaluation report is generated, as a implementer, you obviously have the donors you are held accountable to. But if it's not the donors, it could be uh, other important stakeholders that could be funding you, some of your activities. So it's good to, when you're coming up with the annual report, we are in the year 2020, the 2020 is closing, you're obviously coming up with annual reports. The lessons learned need to reflect in that annual report. And you also have to, you look at the evaluation and write it in a way that as if it was you who was actually writing the report. Of course, the consultants had a major say in the evalu evaluation, but what do you make of the findings and what are the lessons you can get from those findings? So you have to be elaborate on this because what happens is that you have to share these lessons learned to a wider audience. You can use the media, you can use so, of course, social media, your reports, and so on and so forth. This becomes important in the process because it helps you really let others know what you do. And it helps you maintain levels of transparency because that is what stakeholders would want to see. You might be surprised that because you are sharing vital information, to people who are interested, your funding may actually increase because they will see that, okay, this is something that has been working and they use the money appropriately. We want in. What can we do to help you further your cause? So now, after you've learned, after you've read, consulted everything, after you've done everything, the corrective action is very, very important. Because you see, you if you've learned from your mistakes, why are you doing the same? Why are you committing the same mistakes in the first place? When you learn from your mistakes, you need to take corrective action. So when it comes to your next program, project phase, you need to ensure that if truly what the consultant or what the evaluation report made any sense, then that is your opportunity now to really practice what you preach. So, so you have to make sure that the next phase, you do the right thing. There may not be a next phase, there might be a totally new project because maybe the recommendations could be that you just need a total new project. You need to do something totally new, but similar. That is also okay. That can also work. So the whole point is that the continuous learning happens for a reason. And when it happens, your project becomes better and better as the years go by. So this, these are the six key points, guys, that will help you improve on how you conduct, how you identify lessons learned of a project. It's not just an issue of getting the report from a consultant and, or an evaluator and complete, immediately accepting what has been written. You have to go deep. You have to satisfy yourself fully that the content is really answering your questions. 
So now, like I earlier mentioned, 2020 has been a very interesting year. And I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to also discuss about some of the lessons we've learned in 2020. Okay. And I would urge you maybe to stick around. Let's discuss. Let's enlighten ourselves. What have we learned this year? Okay, so these are the 2020 lessons. I don't have a lot of them, but I'm just looking at the major lessons. And I feel that we need to be talking about this, guys. So the one which tops them all is the COVID-19. And when the, when the COVID came, when it first came, it, in early this year, it, it just sounded some, like it was just a normal flu, okay? But it later turned out to be something very dangerous. And as of today, we've lost millions and millions of lives, especially the worst hit countries are obviously the, the countries in Europe and America. It has been a very bad year because of this. I, I remember if you look at some of the videos I was posting, I was panicking as well, but I wanted to help out in trying to further a cause of maybe helping where I can. So one thing I've seen, guys, is that as a globe, as a world, as humanity, we don't seem to have airtight systems. We don't really seem to have uh, airtight, airtight surveillance because if things were tight, in my view, we shouldn't have had uh, this uh, this problem as as big as it was because we we all know where this disease came from. It started from China, and uh, it's just unfortunate that it it just spread so fast. So there wasn't any, and it also t helped me realize that actually WHO is not as strong as we would want to think they are. You see what I'm saying? Because I think they they didn't seem to have it all under control. Like that is just my independent view. Okay. But it's just also telling us that as a humanity, we still have a long way to go when it comes to fighting disease. And uh, this disease has really destroyed everything. It has destroyed marriages. It has destroyed people have lost it, lost their jobs. It's just turned everything upside down, okay? So that was one lesson learned, the COVID-19. Now, the next one is the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals Report 2020. So it was, it's interesting. One thing I need to tell you guys is that the United Nations, and I'm happy to say this, are transparent. When I was reading this report, they didn't uh, try to sugarcoat things. They they gave out information the way it was, the the way it's the way they've captured it. So now, the only concern I had about the UN is that this report was not um, really widely circulated, because I, I I only honestly came to know about it in uh, later in the year when it was actually released earlier on. So I think there has to be some kind of wider circulation. People need to know, media needs to know when they have this report released, okay? That is one, one concern. Now, the biggest concern I had about this report is that we don't seem to be doing well, in most of the, I haven't finished all the indicators, I think. I, I, I think I didn't manage to finish them because obviously I was, I have been busy. And, you know, sometimes posting regularly on YouTube is not easy. It's not easy, guys, but I try as much as possible to do it. 
and you might also want to know that uh, I'm not really earning any much that, that can actually pay my own rent. I'm not earning that, but I'm doing this because I know I'm I know I'm changing a life somewhere. So this report is 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 very sad and. What I noticed is that we are doing very badly in poverty, hunger, uh, health, obviously, because of the COVID-19, uh, quality education. I think we are not really, we seem not to be doing well. So the take home is that um, because looking at the period, we only have 10 years to go until we can achieve the, all these indicators, it looks to me that we are we are dragging, and it's all because uh, the nations are not really committing to achieving these these changes. From my perspective, and also what I read, okay. But on a brighter note, it looks like M and D made simple is growing. I think that's on a lighter note. I took a break last year, I think, in posting regular videos, but then I started picking up my posting. It looks like my subscriber base has grown, which I'm so happy about, okay? We are at eight, above 8,000 subscribers on m and Made Simple. And I think that's very nice. I want, to, I want to congratulate all of you out there for supporting this channel. Let's grow it together. Let's make things happen. Yeah. So I'm, I'm projecting next year it will have a bigger subscriber base. Also, in case you didn't know, on Facebook, there's what is known as the International Experts Group in Monitoring and Evaluation. Right now, we are at 6,000 subscribers plus. If you are not part of this group, please join this group because... It is where you find a, the actual experienced individuals in monitoring and evaluation. So you can get to interact. I'm, I'm the administrator of this group, and I sure want you to be part of this group, guys. Okay? Okay, so thanks for watching. It's been such a pleasure. I wanted also to mention that in the coming few days, I'll be releasing a series on how to the different types of evaluations that are there. So I want you to be part of that series. We're going to be discussing the different types of evaluations so that you can probably be using those types in your projects. So until we meet again, I've been your host, Coach Alexander, and see you on the other side. Bye.